Let me ask you this, Kevin, given your history in business, how has leverage played a role for you? Have you have you relied on leverage to expand entrepreneurially? And and if not in business, how has it played a role in your real estate career? Oh, you're not going to reach your potential as a business owner without leverage. And I'm not talking about just necessarily financial leverage. Like I leverage you all the time, right? I get advice from you. And yeah, we actually just went out, had a couple beers, talked all about YouTube growth two, three, what well, feels like three days ago, but it's probably what last Tuesday, right? I think it's how many beers you had. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's true. Okay. So six days ago, three beers. <laughs> okay. That's right. Yeah. So you're leveraging knowledge. You're leveraging your mentors and coaches. You're leveraging yeah. money. Partners, my first townhome development, for example, I could not have done that alone. So we had to, we went to the bank and got a loan. So we leveraged the bank. We pulled three of us together to all for the down payment and we all had to go in and, and do that. And then the strongest of the two of us signed on the debt. So we leveraged the credit of two of the partners. So it's a whole team effort. And then one of us managed it and he got a little, he got a little management fee for that. So we leveraged his time. Okay. Um, and we had a really interesting conversation too, sweetheart, about leverage that I wanted to kind of share with you guys today as well. Um, you know, Kellyanne comes from a very, very conservative approach to money management. She's always really tight about her money. And, um, and you had an interesting upbringing about this, right? Do you care to share anything about that? Sure. So, you know, my dad was the saver. My mom was the spender. And I feel like growing up and seeing both perspectives, I didn't really have a solid foundation for what I was going to do and where I was going to go. And so, um, Early on in my 20s, I was what I like to call a little bit of a shopaholic and made some questionable choices with my money. And then I went to the complete other end of the spectrum where I hesitate on almost everything. And he and I were talking about this. And so I need to know every last detail about what the end result's going to be and where the money is going and how I'm going to get the return. And I mean, if I don't have every detail, previously before now I would not have spent the money and so Matthew's been really supporting me when it came to leveraging and understanding the benefits of being able to take those risks and spend a little bit faster which I think I've been helping you to spend a little bit slower so we've been <laughs> we've been supporting each other and uh when you got it <laughs> I'm like okay I'm like so you slow down I'll speed up and we'll meet somewhere in the middle um but I was specifically talking about growing my business model within the past couple months here. And I was thinking about like, gosh, like, where am I going to get this extra 80 grand or hundred grand that I'm going to need a year to be able to hire specific people to make big changes in the, in the business model. And then I realized that I didn't necessarily need that much money. And Matthew kind of laid what we like to call the Gary V smackdown on me. And, <laughs> and it really came down to um, just me coming up with like all of these fears and all of these mindsets of why it wouldn't work. And, you know, just going back to what my mind um, automatically, it was my automatic responses. It was my automatic habits. And I had to be able to break those habits when it came to growth and leverage. And so Matthew really looked me straight in my eye and said, what is it that you just don't believe in yourself? And I remember turning over and, and thinking to myself, like, forget this. I'm not letting. She went straight this. to bed. I'm like, I'm not letting this fear <laughs> control me or run me. And I woke up and I immediately that that next morning, I opened up two different types of business lines of credit so that I felt safe when it came to spending extra money. Um, I didn't necessarily need it, but I had it if I felt like I needed it at some point in time in the future. And immediately a, a week later, we ended up getting, you know, uh, a sixty thousand dollar contract, and so it was just one thing after the after the next happened um, when it came to the money that I was needing to leverage and the money that I was creating because I felt safe because the money was there. Yeah, I mean, she had a complete paradigm shift right in front of my very eyes. I mean, it was it was just conveying the point that the chances of needing the money is not inevitable. Okay, you don't necessarily need the money, and what I found is that by by growing all of these aspects of the business, um, in many cases, you end up growing so fast that the money ends up being completely unnecessary. Um, had a great coaching session last week with a couple that we've been in contact with here locally in Colorado for several years, um, and they've struggled with some of this themselves. Now, theirs is a, a very uh, admittedly generous spending habit too. I mean, they spend on anything they want, whenever they want, they make great money, a couple hundred thousand dollars per year. 
Uh, and, you know, they've ended up with $65,000 in their checking and savings accounts while paying 14 to 29% in interest costs on $50,000 worth of credit card balances. That makes absolutely no sense. If you can organize it differently where you still have access to the $65,000 of liquidity, so when they're ready to move forward on an investment, they have it. But in the meantime, park their money against that $50,000. It saved $1,300 a month for them like that. That's the equivalent of too generously or healthy, healthy paying rental properties without having to deal with two new roofs and and two new tenants and you know uh two termite nests right so at the end of the day it was an incredibly important decision for them to move on that and and actually um joe why don't you share your perspective because you were on that con that conversation right so what was your biggest takeaway from that call with that student because we really had to pull them out of their comfort zone right so what was what was your recollection of that conversation for me, they, uh, it was all about psychology. You know, they really needed to uh, understand that there, uh, there's the, the money in the bank wasn't their security and that they were losing money every month in interest. And if they could just work off that uh, credit card, pay those credit cards down, get rid of that, the, that access to that money is still available to them even though they had money, less money in the bank, their income can refill those coffers. But uh, it was really a psychology thing for them. And, and I think Matt approached it really well. It was, you know, kind of like, let's do it step by step then if we can't do it all at once. Um, but it was, it, was, it was a mental thing. You know, I had to get over the mental hurdle. And um, if you can't do it all at once, do it step by step. And that's really what this was. I mean, we had a conversation with them back in April. So the initial circumstances I described was what I saw in April. So she had come back to us last week for a follow up to this. And now they have $13,000 worth of credit card balances. And guess what happened, folks? Their checking account balance grew from $65,000 to $95,000. So not only did they attack and eliminate two thirds of their existing or almost three quarters of their existing credit card balance, but they had $30,000 more sitting in checking and savings accounts than they had during our last conversation. So her fears of losing access to this money that was giving her this sense of peace of mind and safety uh, was completely in her head. And by just simply releasing herself of, of the pressure that they feel constantly by having this debt burdening them, it allowed them to go out and be more successful in their businesses. And I think that's a real key component to this is when you're accomplishing optimization on both sides of the balance sheet at the same time, not just focusing on how much can I borrow, borrow, borrow in order to leverage into speculated rates of return that exceed the cost of the money you're borrowing, but at the same time, attacking and minimizing the liabilities that come along with borrowing a ton of money and the liabilities that come with improper tax planning. Those types of things can set you so far back that I, in my opinion, creating a, a, uh, a customized hybrid for each person along the lines of not just doing one or the both of those, uh, one or the other of those, but actually doing some form of both is critical. And that's what you're going to find here on this channel more than anything.